By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And it is Tuesday today, and that means more action for you from the Farmstead Old School Tournament held in Mirlo. Now, this tournament is quite special because um, players were challenged to build a deck with the core sets only, so Alpha, Beta, and Unlimited. But what they did for this tournament, they also included Revised. So you can imagine that kind of opened up a whole can of worms, and more and more decks are possible now because of that. Now, if you'd like to know more about the tournament, the rules, all the specifics, please check the description below. Today, we are going to look at a fun match. It's it's just, that is what it is when I'm looking at these decks. It's got to be a fun deck. I mean, a fun match. And it is between Peter and Gideon. And Peter is playing a deck that is completely alpha beta. It's got three colors. It's uh, red, it's green, and there's white in there. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. I've got a pretty cool deck picture that I'm going to show you in the deck tech. And Gideon is playing just such a cool, quirky deck. It's the first time I've seen a deck like this. Uh, it is Enchantress, it is green and black, and it also has, I would say a little bit more than just a blue splash. It's got some blue cards in it as well, but the main components of the deck are definitely green and black. So it's green, black, Enchantress. That's kind of the name that I've given it, but there's definitely a little bit of a blue splash. Now, before I go to the deck decks, because I've got deck photos of both of these decks, uh, I would just first like to point out that as always, um, you can also skip the deck tech section or maybe check the deck deck section after the games. And you can do that very simply by checking the description below. There you find several timestamps. And when you click on the timestamp MTG games, you go directly to the action, to the MTG games themselves. Um, here we are going to continue with the deck deck. And I think I'm first gonna dive into the deck of, uh, of Gideon. Why not? It's just, it's looking so cool. So let's take a look at this Enchantress deck. And here we see the deck of Gideon and uh, man, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. What I really appreciate, um, well, I, I guess it's not true because there's your weakness. What I wanted to say, what I really appreciate is that everything's wide bordered. But the, look at those two weaknesses there because I guess the dice are kind of showing how many uh, of each card you have in your deck. So we see a Black Knight with four, so you're playing with the full playset. Hypnotic Spectre only with three. Then you're playing with Lay Druid. I think Lay Druid's so cool, man. You're playing with the one off. Uh, one green and two to cast for this creature, a 1-1. One, one. It's, I believe, a rare, actually. And you can tap the Lay Druid to untap target land. So you can see it's, it's, it has potential. It is, it is pretty cool. And in this deck, there are actually quite a lot of uh, creatures that require, or spells that require, like, a double blue or a double green or a double black. And I guess Lay Druid can actually help with that. Remember, this is core set only, so you don't have access to City of Brass, for example. So it's making it a little bit more difficult to fix your mana in this format. And of course, the star of the show is the Fragurian Enchantress, two green and one for an O2 creature that reads, whenever you cast an enchantment, you get to draw a card. So that's of course the center of this deck. And we can see that coming back in the simple fact that he's playing with a lot of enchantments. He's playing with web, he's playing with lure, he's playing with anime deaths, playing with paralyzed, playing with unholy strength. I think it's it's really cool. Uh, Control Magic, another enchantment. I think it's really cool to kind of see some of the quirky enchantments coming back like Web. You know, Web is a card you don't see often. I think it's so flavorful. And remember, this is actually also a rare. That is how good, you know, Wizards of the Coast thought that this card was when they first printed it in Alpha. It's one green to cast an enchant creature and says gives plus O plus two to target creature and they can now block creatures with flying. So it's kind of that giant spider ability that you get. And actually giant spider is maybe one of the creatures I'm missing in, in this deck. It would be cool to see that too. Although I understand why I didn't put it in there. You have so many good creatures to choose from. It's really nice here to see Thicket Basilisks and uh, and Lure as well. I also like Animate Dead uh, for a few reasons in this deck. So first off, Animate Dead works great in just, you know, getting creatures back, your terror creature from your opponent, and then you steal it with anime debt. That's just like a lot of fun. It's also a good way of getting your own creatures back, including your Fragurian Enchantress, because usually as soon as your players see that, hey, you're playing with a Fragurian Enchantress deck, they start killing your Enchantress on the spot, right? So anime debt gives you an option to get your Enchantress back because that's what your whole deck is built around, right? So it's pretty important to have that on the on the battlefield. And at the same time, if your Fajuan Enchantress is already on the board, 
Anime Dead is another really strong shaman that's going to do his thing and is going to give you a card because you're playing with the Fijuran Enchantress. So it's like a win-win situation. So it makes sense to combine Anime Dead and Fijuran Enchantress in the deck. I'm actually personally also working on a deck with Fijuran Enchantress and Black. So I'm going to call it Naughty Enchantress. Uh, it's kind of been... I've been working on it for 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 a while now. So, um, but that's 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 for later. First, let's look at this at this match before I start talking about future projects. So here we see uh, the deck of Gideon. I'm I'm seeing a lot of strong cards. I'm thinking it's going to be really tough for Peter actually. But it looks like a really really cool deck as well, Gideon. Thank you for bringing it here to the channel. Now let's take a look at the deck of Peter. And here we see the deck of Peter. Now, I've just called it Channel Fireball because it's got Channel Fireball in there. It's a completely black border deck, you know, Alpha Beta. I love it. It looks beautiful. And one, one of the things I noticed first is the fact he's playing with three colors, but he's not playing with any dual lands. So that is pretty cool. Um, maybe that's going to make it hard for him to cast certain spells. But as you can see, uh, Wrath of God is actually the only spell in his deck that requires a double color mana, right? Two whites, so that's the only one. The rest, it's all or single green or single red or single white or it's artifacts. And talking about Wrath of God, by the way, I guess it's in here because it works so well with Jade Statue. Jade Statue is a card that wasn't reprinted after Unlimited, so not everybody knows it. So let's just get it up on the screen. It is a 3-6 creature, but it's not a creature. It's actually an artifact, so you, you, you pay four it comes in the game just as an artifact, and during combat you can pay 2 mana to turn it into a 3-6 creature, right? And after combat it turns back again into a statue. So it's not an until end of turn effect, it's an until the end of combat effect. So in the end step of combat it changes back into a statue. So that means that, for example, you cannot fireball the Jade statue, because that's sorcery speed. You need like an instant or interrupt to deal with this uh, card as a creature. You know, because of course there are enough cards where you can target it with just as um, as an artifact. So you could play like a Shatterstorm that will take care of your Jade Statue. Now the cool thing is the synergy between Wrath of God and Jade Statue. You can play your Wrath of God, destroy everything on the board, all the creatures that is, but your uh, Jade Statue will stay because it's a statue, it's not a creature. Then in combat it comes alive and you can start attacking with it. So that is a really cool... Uh, synergy and a way that these two cards work together. I guess, you know, the rest of the deck, it's pretty straightforward. There's one card in this deck that I'm like, why is it in there? And that is Demonic Tutor. I don't see a single black source. Maybe I'm missing something. I mean, I don't know. Those, do those Lanora Elves turn into Birds of Paradise or something later in the game? I have, I have no idea. But maybe, Peter, if you're watching this, you can let me know what is the deal with the Demonic Tutor. I mean, it is a beautiful card, but I don't think you can cast it with your mana base, but maybe I'm missing something. It does happen. Okay, this is the deck of Peter. We've looked at the deck of his opponent, Gideon. Now let's go to the match. Game number one is about to start here. Gideon on the left, Peter on the right, and he's starting with a basic mountain. Ooh, look at Gideon go there. Mox Jack, Tropical Island into a Chaos Orb. So that is a good start for him. No disenchant, it seems, from Peter. Of course, he can still cast it on activation. Whoa! Ancestral Recall. Gideon is off to the races, and there is a Black Knight and a quick bolt on the Black Knight. But what a start here for Gideon. There we see a Soul Ring tapping four. Is that a Juggernaut? I think it is. Kind of hard to see with the glare, but I believe it's a Juggernaut. Then the question is, is he going to flip on the Juggernaut, or does he have another way of dealing with it? There is a Hypnotic Spectre, and yes, he is going to flip on the Juggernaut. Okay, attention please. There we go, and yeah, it's a hit. That went really fast, by the way. So the Juggernaut is gone. But uh, Hideo now has that Hypnotic Spectre. It's attacking. Will there be another Bolt or a Swords to Plowshares? No, there is not, and now he'll have to discard one of his cards... And it's going to be the Hurricane. Ooh, that is painful because Hurricane is the solution, but you can see he didn't have any green mana. There is a Senkir Vampire. I think this first game is going to be over very, very quickly. Six damage, going to go down to 12. And he's going to lose another card. He's going to lose his Lana Rails. I couldn't find any green mana. And I'm already talking in past tense because I think this game is pretty much over. Okay, there is at least the Swords. So choosing to Swords... The Hippie, wanting to keep his one card in hand, taking four damage. I wonder what it is. 
There is a Vajurn Enchantress and an Anime Dead on the Juggernaut. Oh, man. I mean, it was already game over, but it's only going to get worse here for Peter. Look at all the cards, and he's smiling away. He knows that this is, this is done, this game. And... Um, yeah, it's a 2-4 now with the web on it. It can block creatures with flying. And I mean, if he has a balance, but I don't believe he plays a balance in the deck, Wrath of God could do something. And he's playing a huge hurricane, which is pretty sweet, actually. But unfortunately for him, you know, uh, Gideon also decided to get back the Juggernaut and not the, um, not the Hypnotic Spectre. So this was really, really quick game one. So both players are going to shuffle up and uh, we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. So let's see if Peter can kind of make it into a game. And going through his cards here, is he going to keep it? That's the first question. Looks like he is starting with green. Okay, so at least he's found some green mana. Bring on that Lanor Elf. I'm rooting for you, Peter. Let's do something. Play the basic mountain pastor. We see a bayou and a forest on the side of Gideon. Look at that. A black lotus. And his deck is fully powered. So that's probably one of the reasons why... Peter's really struggling against this deck. Ooh, there's so much glare. I can't really see what card that is. It's got to have a casting cost of two, though. Maybe it's a Drudge Skeleton. I know he plays with Drudge. Oh, okay, it's uh, Black Knight. Interesting. Okay, answers from Peter. I'm actually happy with this. So, Swords to Plowshares on the Hippie and a Bolt on the Black Knight. So, that kind of takes care of business. And again, we see that Chaos Orb. And is he now playing, I think it's another Hypnotic Spectre. Okay, there we see another Swords to Plowshares. And there is a Forest. I do see a Juggernaut in hand there for Peter. He's playing out the Juggernaut. Okay, so are we going to see another flip on the Juggernaut, just like we saw in game number one? And okay, there's some chocolate. Okay, nice, nice chocolate <laughs> from the region. Shout out to Mirlo. And um, yeah, is this going to be the flip? Yeah, it's going to be another flip. So two Juggies. There's the flip. That's the hit. Juggernaut is gone. And there's an anime dead. Oh, man. I'm starting to see a pattern here. This is exactly what we saw in, um, in the first game. And I'm feeling kind of bad here for Peter. He does have that fireball, but do you really want to play a fireball... It is, of course, a 4-3 because it gets a minus 1, minus 0 counter. I mean, maybe he's still in 20. Uh, yeah, it's probably a good decision. Yeah, Fireball, yeah. The problem here is he's got one card and there. He's got three cards in hand. And, oh, there's a Gloom. Okay, okay, that's bad, but not so bad for Peter. And there's a Time Walking Hand for Gideon. He is finding his power cards. Is that another anime dead? Don't think so because he's not playing it out. And more and more lands for both of these players. Kind of top decking mode right now. There is an unholy strength. Tapping four and casting a juggernaut. Ooh, this could be interesting. What can he do? There is a, is that a weakness on the juggernaut? Yeah, it's a weakness. So it gets minus two, minus one. So it's now a, uh, a three, two attacking him. Dealing at least some damage. Another juggernaut. Okay, this is looking good. What can Gideon do here? And he's just passing turn, so he's he's in for a turn of pain and attacking for eight. Look at that life total dropping to 13. Ooh, is Peter gonna pull it off? Is he gonna make it a one-one? He's not there yet, of course, but he's very close. Just needs one more turn. And Hurricane, that's it. Oh man, I'm actually really happy. I thought a moment there in the game, especially the way Gideon started this game too, that it was just going to be another run over. And I'm quite excited that, um, you know, Peter managed to kind of get back into it. And you can see mana is so important for Peter. He needs those three colors of mana to be able to kind of play his spells because he's got no duels. Anyway, um, both of these players are going to sideboard again, shuffle again, and we'll catch back up with them in game number three. Game number three. Here we go. It's a 1-1. One -one. Let's see what's going to happen. And there, he's taking a mulligan. Starting with an underground C and a pass. And there is a black knight again. And there, oh, it's a drudge skeleton. Okay, couldn't see it properly because of the glare. There's a quick bolt on the drudge and a pass. 
and there's the Black Knight. And let's take a look. It's of course hard to, okay, Fireball, you can do a Fireball, because I did see that Swords in the hand of Pater, but he cannot use it against the Black Knight. Is he now playing another one, or is this, oh, this is a Demonic Tutor. There's just so much glare on the cards. Okay, Demonic Tutor, there we go. I was like, hey, wait a minute, it's not a Black Knight, because he starts to go through his, his uh, library. So, okay, that was a Demonic Tutor and a pass. And, oh, yeah, found the Ancestral Recall. Gonna look for land, finding a Bayou and a Regrowth. Oh, man, that is dirty. Regrowth on the Ancestral Recall. And this is tough. There's a Lanora Elf on the side of Pater. And there is a Hypnotic Spectre. I'm kind of expecting, yeah, expecting that Swords there to take care of the Hippie. And maybe just an attack for one, you know, wouldn't be that bad. And we still have that Ancestral Recall. There we see it being played. There we go. Wow, look at this. More and more threats. And maybe, you know, Pater needs a second white in a Wrath. Is that still a Swords in hand? I can't really... Oh, the, he's got a Wrath of God in hand. He just doesn't have his second white source. That is unfortunate. And what is he going to do? Okay, playing a Regrowth probably on the Swords. Or does he have enough to play that Fireball? He can play the Fireball, actually, because he's got the Lanora Elf as well. So I would get back the Fireball, and I would kill both creatures, because he can make six mana. And, oh, he's not doing it. He's not doing it. Why, Pater? You could have killed both of them, I think. Or am I making a mistake here? Anyway, he did what he did, getting, get, getting back the Bolt. He's going to go to 18 now. He's still got a lot of life. He just needs that second white to wipe the board clean. And now he's gonna take six probably. He's gonna drop down to 12. There is a pass. And there is a soul ring. And it's just so difficult in his deck without the dual lands and playing with three colors. You just kinda gotta pay the price at a certain moment. And we saw that in game one. We're seeing that here in game number three. He's gonna go down to six. He'll be forced to jump lock next turn. And unfortunately for him, there's not that second white. He's gonna attack, that's interesting. Does he have another creature in hand in that case? Is he gonna play out a Juggernaut? Okay, Hurricane. Ooh, but that's gonna put him on two, right? Isn't he killing himself, basically? That's it, he shouldn't have attacked with the Lanower. <laughs> oh, man, I kind of paid through, to be honest, I think. There were a few moments in this game where you could have made different decisions. That's always easy looking back at this from the commentary uh, seat. I want to say booth. I'm not in a booth. But from my commentary position, looking back at a match, nice and relaxed and saying you should have done this, you should have done that. That's always really easy. Uh, it is It is what it is. You know, I think, I think in hindsight, even if you would have maybe played the fireball on both targets and maybe kept Lanara up for chump block, it would have given you some time. But eventually, I'm sure uh, Gideon would have won regardless. Uh, and it's really cool that you brought a deck to the table with three colors, but I guess uh, you need to get some black border duels, but <clears throat> yeah, they're not really cheap. Anyway, uh, congratulations to Gideon. I kind of feel like we didn't really saw uh, your deck work in full cylinders, uh, Gideon. We did see a lot of your power, by the way. So that was, uh, yeah, that was very impressive. And this is the deck of Gideon. I do think it's a beautiful deck. And um, if you enjoyed this match and if you want to see more of the Farmstead competition in Mirlo, check, um, check back with us on Tuesday. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Thank you very much for that. And um, if you want to support the channel, there's actually something else that you can do. You can also become a patron by joining Timmy Talks on the Patreon page. And then you can sponsor the channel also financially. It already starts with $1. And the cool thing is you get your name in the end scroll. Yes, it really happens. Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, the amazing, the wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks.
Ik het als fik het als zomba kan zien.